Now, in addition to learning about technology and society, your students will learn about engineering principles and systems. So this gets into the theory of how we actually engineer solutions. Um, different ways of joining things together, be that through sewing them, through gluing them, through welding. Don't do a lot of welding in primary school, but um, these are all the different concepts that you teach your students about. They might use staples, they might use hot glue guns, glue, they might use nails. There are a range of different ways of attaching things together. Um, one of the first concepts students learn, though, is how different um, materials affect the movement of objects. So how they could make different types of um, moving things. So creating a toy that can move uh, on wheels or sliding or flying, floating. These are all different um, concepts that students learn about and how the properties of the materials can affect what it can do in terms of its movement. Um, students may also look at doing puppets or marionettes and um, how the different design of the solution and the materials used in that solution can affect how the puppet works. Now, one activity that's very popular with students is um, where we do a sequence of these types of movement processes. Um, formerly we call this the Rube Goldberg machines, where we have things um, hitting one another and moving a ball or, some, or something that keeps the movement um, causing change to the next thing that does movement, uh, finally progressing to some sort of outcome, normally turning something on or having something roll or something like that. But students can make these through with cardboard and recycled materials, having marble runs and various other approaches, and also just exploring different ways of inventing processes, such as making a breakfast with an automated machine that um, moves a pan across onto the fire and turns on a kettle to boil water and, and through all these different processes. And the example I give in one of the videos is doing a morning routine of having a shower and, and so forth. These are things that students engage with and enjoy coming up with creative designs and solutions too. And they can plan out their designs on paper and then try to um, make them actual through simple um, mechanistic movements. So in years five and six, students advance to looking at electricity and how electricity can be transformed into movement, sound, light in their solutions. So they can develop electronic solutions using tools such as the Makey Makeys and um, so forth, or just simple electronic circuits. They can then start investigating those in more depth and creating various solutions. Now, materials and technology specializations explores all of the properties of the materials that students use. So looking at how they can be combined and modified and joined and used to then create various solutions. So one may be creating baskets or bracelets. Um, so lots and lots of examples that are provided, but you can sort of think about all the different types of creative problem solving activities you can engage your students with. It may be creating costumes. It may be um, using architectural software or cardboard or Lego, creating house designs or a new um, classroom or hall for the school. These are all creative activities that you can engage your students with, looking at the various materials that will be involved in these ta um, tasks. So if we're making a house, what sort of materials need to go on the roof so that it's waterproof? How strong do the walls need to be so that it's not blown over in a cyclone? If they're making a costume, how durable do the materials have to be so they don't tear or rip or so forth as part of their movements in their clothing? So these are things that you need to think about and develop in terms of the solutions that you're designing for your students. And part of that also incorporates sustainability. So there's a video to look at in terms of the different ways we could recycle and use 
um, soft drink bottles, for example. So again, students creatively thinking up different solutions using various materials based upon the properties that determine what that material can be used for. And then for your challenge, you're going to look at a student solution to a design challenge where they were tasked with de designing a treehouse and building a model of that treehouse. So thinking about as an architectural challenge, what's required to build the treehouse, um, to keep the sun and the rain off, whether or not walls will be needed, um, ladders to get access into the tree, all of the different things that they need to think about and the materials that will be used for these purposes based upon the properties of those materials, whether or not they would be durable enough, whether or not they be strong enough to hold someone's weight, all of these things that the students can think about and explore as part of their design process. And then making models of these can be incorporated into that. And through this, you can target various concepts that you may want students to develop. In this case, they were looking at the concepts of pneumatics and hydraulics, where we can use syringes and plastic tubing to make things move. So as the syringe is compressed, another syringe on the other end will then expand, which can then cause movement to close a door or open a door, or lower a ladder, whatever they've incorporated into their designs. So using simple um, concepts of pneumatics, they can transmit um, force over distance and make things happen as part of their solutions.